Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let's see, maybe this one. Way to call them out. <laughs> <laughs> They're never coming oh, back here.
first and greatest commandment. Everyone say first and greatest. First and greatest. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And the second is like it. Do we love God? Yes. Amen, right? Are we loving people as much as we are loving God? That's a little tougher to do, right? Because well, God is perfect. People are imperfect. So it's a little harder to love. But he commands us to do this, right? Um, the next one is in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. Alright, so here it says, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a what? A liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. Wow, that's kind of a wake-up call to us. Saying that we're a liar if we do not love our brother and sister. Brother and sister is us, all of us, right? Outside of these walls, inside of these walls, it's everyone. So if we're claiming to love God, but not our neighbor, our family member, we're liars. That's why it's so important to love them. And when we come to church, that's, that's an example of love and loving and trying to love. Right? Um, so if, I just want to take a moment here and with everyone closing their eyes, I want you to think of someone that you may not like, that you may hate. And if you don't have anyone, don't try to come up with someone, that's okay. <laughs> but if you do, if someone is just bugging you or someone did something really bad, just picture them in your head. You, you seem to may not forgive them for whatever reason. God sees it. God sees that person. He loves you, but he also loves that person. I just want to pray we can let that go. Lord, you see what is in our minds, what is in our hearts. Lord, we do not want to have hate in our heart for anyone. And you know what the future holds and something terrible may happen. Pray that you guide us through it. That our hearts do not grow cold to people, but to keep loving, to keep showing your love. That is the only way that a world filled with hate can change. God, we do not want to be liars. Just take that from us today. In the holy name we pray, amen. Uh, and that doesn't stop right there, right? You may have given it to God, but it's still something tough that's going to have to uh, happen through you. You have to take those steps. Um, so this first part, uh, what is, or sorry, second part. What is love? So to learn how to love people better, we need to understand what love is and not, and specifically what agape is. Everyone say agape. agape. Um, so if you are taking notes, write this definition down. So agape is an action. It is seeking the well-being of people other than yourself. Again, it's an action and it is seeking the well-being of people 
other than yourself. So this specific definition, I got it from Pastor Lee's book, uh, his new book, The Sacred Union. Um, but uh, if you look it up, you get a similar uh, definition. So I don't know about you, but that is tough to seek the well-being of everyone else instead of myself. Oof, that means you have to look out for every single person, right? It's hard, but God didn't say it would be. He said it was possible to love them. Um, so that's saying I gotta love the person who cut me off on the road and waved at me with their middle finger. <laughs> yeah, that person. He's saying to love the person who cuts me out in the parking lot because I got the parking lot there to go. Did y'all hear me though? Um, <laughs> I heard I talked out. Um, he's saying to love those people regardless of any situation. He knows the hurt. Of course he knows the hurt. He's our God. But he also knows what they're going through. And they might have had a bad day like we have bad days. And God gave his one and only son to die for us on the cross. The most brutal beating, the most brutal death, and on the cross, he says they don't know what they're doing. Talk about love. Oh my goodness. How we cannot forgive someone for doing something against us. Church isn't, Jesus isn't selfish. Church isn't selfish. We come to love others. This next one is how to love others better. So here I want to give you practical ways on how to love others better. If you want to um, just grow in your relationship with Christ, these are a few ways that you can do that. Come to church. Y'all already got one of them, right? Come to church. Y'all are here at church. Um, but come to church regularly, right? Hebrews 10, verses 24 through 25, it says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I just want y'all to look around right now. Every single person, look around. Catch someone's eyes. Maybe smile at them. Finger guns. I don't know. Whatever. Look around. That is your family. That is your church family. We all come here for one reason, and that is to follow Christ, to worship God. And we are here for one another. So by choosing to, to come to church, we are choosing to love others, to commune with each other, to carry each other's burdens, and to, to worship God together. The next one, join a community group. So I wanted to give you verses for each of these uh, so, that, so that you know that it is in the word to do these things. In Acts chapter two, Acts chapter two, verses 42 through 47. So it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Wow. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Community is so important, as Zach was touching on. Being together, meeting together is so important, but even more in a smaller, smaller way, 
You get to know who, who they are. You get to see their struggles. You get to carry their burdens when it's too much for them. We get to pray with each other, learn together. Um, when I first started the young adults group, it was three or four of us. And that was more than enough, right? Where two or three are gathered, he's there. And it was so great to just follow God together, right, as young adults. And now seeing the group, so many new people, oh my gosh, it's been incredible. It's been so good. And I know that's not just in our group, but in other groups as well. There's so many testimonies of people growing closer to each other, but also to God. So get plugged in. Get plugged into a community group. Don't be afraid. Everyone's, everyone's there in the same boat with you, following the same God. All right, the next one we have here is volunteer. Volunteer, uh, I just want to thank uh, all the volunteers that we have here. And if you vol volunteer outside of uh, church, thank you for that too. Um, but you are the reason that people come in and they feel welcomed. You are the ones that make the church run. Without you, it would be very hard. It would be very hard. So thank you. In Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 13, it says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Everyone say, serve one another. We are called to do this. Humbly in love. Jesus showed the ultimate selflessness in laying down his life to set us free. We must always seek to imitate his selflessness by serving others instead of ourselves. It could be as simple as letting the car in front of yours in that long traffic line. It's hard sometimes, but you gotta do it. All right, um, this next one here we have is give, right? Either to the church, to an organization, to a charity, just give. Um, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 44 through 45, Matthew chapter 24, verses 44 through 45, says they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. God is everywhere. He is in every person. So it's important to give, whether that's your time, whether that's your finances, whatever it is. Help those that are in need. Um, a while ago, in the youth ministry, we started a a sponsorship called Adopt a Teen. And uh, I asked some adults if they were willing to sponsor uh, some of these teens to go to trips, uh, events that we had, and um, they were so willing to do this. Quick, quick. And they don't expect anything. The kids don't even know who their sponsors are. Wow, talk about humble love. And these teens have gone to experience so many things because of that love. And they know when they come into this church that they are loved, as they are seeking Christ as well. And I just want to thank, they know who they are. Thank you for, for doing that. And if you are interested in doing something like that, reach out to me. And as well as the volunteer, if you want to get plugged in somewhere, reach out to us. This next one's a little hard. Pray for friends and enemies. In Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 28, it says, But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. 
It's easy to love our friends. It's easy to love those who love us. Everyone can do that. But it's hard to love those who don't love us, who talk bad about us, who could care less about us. But that's what God's calling us to do. Wow. How many times have we not been the most loving towards God? And he still loves us unconditionally. Why can't we give that same love back to each other? And again, God's not saying it's going to be a piece of cake. You got it. No. But he's there. He's God for a reason. He strengthens us. He is the one that strengthens us, not the world, not ourselves. Because if we did it ourselves, we'd get so tired so fast. And there is a world out there that does not know Christ. That is why you see so many violent acts committed. Every week you see it in the news. Hateful acts. But we can change that. We can be the reason that they feel loved in whatever circumstance they are in. Through God. And this last one I have for you is read your word. You can't do anything without it. In Psalm verse 119, sorry, chapter 119, verse 105, it says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So picture this, everything's dark. And all you have is a lamp in front of you. That lamp is God's word. And when you don't know where to go, he's guiding you. Is there going to be a hole there? Okay, turn this way. He's the one that guides us through his word. So we need to fill up on his word. So we know what to do, what to say, where to go. So we can love people better. So when I was doing this, I wanted to know the number of how many people leave the church every year. And it surprised me. And it's 2.3 million. Wow. 2.3 million people leave the church every year. Why? Imagine if we all love like Jesus. The church couldn't contain that many people. Again, Jesus isn't selfish. Following Jesus isn't about me. It's about all of you. We need to love better so the world out there that is hurting, even in here, we're hurting. So that they can come to a place like this and feel loved, feel at home. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your amazing love. That nothing compares to it. That you love us despite our downfalls. The things that we do every single day. That are not of you. The times that we've turned our back against you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help us to love better. Help us to grow in this. Because we want to love you better. Lord, there is a world that hates each other. That is filled with hate. Father, you are the only one that can change that. 
I pray that you come into our hearts. You change it to a way that we can love every single person. The ones that love us, the ones that hate us, the ones that want nothing to do with us. Give us the strength to endure it. Give us to give us the strength to forgive. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this church family, this church body that is here for one another. Speak to us individually on what our next step should be. We put it all on you, Jesus. In the holy name we pray. Amen. That was good. All the time. Living in community and loving people is hard, right? That's what God's called us to. So it's not an option. The class that we're having right after uh, church, the New Beginnings, there's a moment in there where we talk about if you are a Christian, participating in the body of Christ is not an option. If you believe in Christ, then being part of the body is what you are called to be, which is how we treat each other and how we then in turn treat the world. Amen? So... That's a segue into announcements. New Beginnings classes right after service will be in the foyer um, starting about 20 minutes or so after we, we close here. Um, there's a new one on the app called the Missionaries Pastors Food Collection. That's starting today through February 9th. Okay, that uh, bring perishable, uh, non-perishable canned goods. You can drop them off in the foyer or you can go into the giving tab in the app and scroll down and give to that. That food is going to go to seven pastoral families in Mexico that are in uh, a lot of uh, need right now. So they're actually going to deliver that on Thursday, February 9th. Or sorry, 11th. Lay ministry class. That is uh, the fourth step of our growth track. That is where we uh, believe we're going to help you discover how God's equipped you for ministry. We believe God's called everyone to ministry, and so that's what that class is about. You can sign up for that. It's actually going to be happening on Thursdays here in the church at 7 o'clock. There's child care for that. Um, the child dedication service got moved from February 5th to February 19th. So if you're looking for that and it got moved a little further down, you still got time to sign up for that. The youth are going to have a Valentine's Day party on February 8th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. All they do is have parties and have fun. Um, and they don't invite us old people. Um, the, and the young adults, uh, which I'm also too old apparently, uh, the young adults are having a Valentine's Day party on February 13th. That is $10. That is 18 to 28-ish. You can take that ish to mean whatever you want it to mean. Okay? I say all of us old people show up and crash it. Okay? Uh, the men's prayer breakfast is happening on February 11th in the gym at 9 a.m. The, the women's Bibles and brunch is also taking place, but they're doing something special. They're going to be writing cards for kids that are hospitalized right now. And so that would be a great time for you to come, and that's an, an extending an arm of loving some kids in a bad situation. Amen? So if you're a woman and you have handwriting, which we all do, be here next um, Saturday, 9 a.m. Okay? Um, Richard Ramirez Memorial Men's Retreat it is the fifth annual. It is March 24th and 25th. If you're a man, you do not want to miss it. It is all the activities that puts hair on your chest and makes you grunt like Tim Allen. Okay? We are shooting uh, skeet, throwing axes, uh, pistol co uh, competition, great food, uh, coffee prepared by a bunch of military guys so thick that it takes five minutes to come out of the pot. It's great. Sleeping under the stars. It's awesome, yes. Everything about it is awesome. You don't want to miss it. So sign up for that very soon. There is a cost to that. Um, so, so sign up for that. The Young Adult Retreat is the last one. It's coming up at the end of May, May 24th through 27th. It is $280 to go. That seems like a lot. Okay? But I promise you, it's not, it's not too bad. Okay? If you make the uh, minimum deposit by the end of January, that's $60. From then on, monthly payments of $55 will get you there. Okay, it is a fantastic, fantastic time. Um, you don't want to miss it, but if you are a young adult or you know a young adult that you're saying there is no way, no way they can make it financially, let Pastor Vanessa know. 
That is not an empty gesture. We will find a way to make sure that everyone that wants to go can go. Okay? So if you know somebody or you are somebody, she's wearing pink. It's hard to miss her. Okay? <laughs> Why don't y'all stay with me as we release this morning? Uh, her sermon today was all about loving people into a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is our mission statement. We say it constantly because we believe having vision in your life doesn't come by accident. And so we continually repeat it so that eventually it comes out and it starts affecting our actions. Amen? So I want to encourage you to do that. If today is your first day, we are super excited that you're here. We would love to meet you. We got Alicia um, there in the back at the Welcome Center with some gifts of one of Pastor Lee's book um, and mugs. And there's also one out in the foyer. I don't know who's at that one because I can't see through all. But you got two options there. So... Be blessed and go and live and be a blessing. Y'all have a great week.